Hey guys, Weather Expert here, bringing guys an awesome video on an update on Hurricane Fred. It's now a hurricane, and it looks uh, pretty, um, doesn't look like a hurricane, but about 24, about, you know, 10, 12 hours ago, it actually looked pretty healthy. Um, it had a developing eye around the afternoon, but now it's starting to look ragged. You can see serious clouds right here. This is indicating dry air. You can see on the Saharan air layer right here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the loop because for some reason my computer does not support it. But if we go back three hours and we go, it's starting to entrain. Um, some of it is just, it's not just dust that's in the air, it's just drier. This is only picking up the dust. So, um, yeah, it's get, um, it's got a long road and most likely it'll just disintegrate over the Atlantic, just move northwest and just disintegrate out here. But we got other waves behind that. We got this wave right here, we got this wave right here, we got this wave right here, and we got this wave right here. Now, models aren't really picking up on any development of these just because of the Saharan air layer and the increasing, increasing shear potentially but I think that these things could have a chance of developing because it is starting to get towards the peak of the season guys and once that happens then boom it's just gonna you know it's just gonna be really weird usually it just picks up but it's gonna be really weird if we get to the peak hurricane season and yeah so um let's go to um let's go to our awesome windstream graphic from wind alert they have awesome company that gives you windstream graphics around the world which is really awesome you can view you know sea surface temperature on the globe satellite forecast map now um, wind which is what I really like um, you can see that the winds there are 39 miles per hour because now they're starting to turn away those are the sustained winds the, the gusting probably up to 50 or 60 miles per hour but you can see it's got very tight and tight it's a very tiny storm it's got but it's a very tight circulation as we zoom in on the on this, it looks pretty awesome. Here's Santo Antonio. I don't know. Look at this. Look at this beauty. I mean, look at this windstream graphic. Is that? This is just absolutely amazing. You can see the eyes around right here. It's not. It's just passing just um, right here, probably. I'm, I'm just gonna click on. It and you can see 41 miles per hour. Just because this does not go past 40 miles per hour, it's kind of bum. It's kind of a bummer, but you know. <clears throat> You know, snooze you lose. But of course, there's this windstream graphic, and you guys can see that um, you can see that Fred is in a all right environment, starting to get into some increasing shear with some, you know, um, t five, ten, probably about, yeah, this is about ten knots or so. So it's gonna, it's starting to get some ten knot shear, and it should be kind of a weird. But let's go. Uh, well, I don't know why I keep saying weird, but it should. So, but I'm focusing my um. I'm just focusing on the Caribbean just for a second. We haven't had a single storm go through the Caribbean without surviving. This one kind of catches my attention, but I think there's a very low chance it develops. Just something that you just got to keep in mind as we head towards October. Even though September is over, but when you get to the October months, you really got to pay attention in this region because the waters are extremely warm. They have warmer than they ever have, and you guys can see that. Um, this is a nice... Um, nice remnants of Erica, which collide with the frontal boundary, which is making this lawn. Usually at the tail end of these, you can get low pressure systems right here, but it's going to be moving over Cancun, going over land, and then if you look go back to the windstream graphic, you can see that shear is decreasing over here, but it's increasing over here. So it could, it's, it would have a long row, but I don't think this thing has to develop. I think a 10% chance within the next five days of developing. But you know, it's a, the National Hurricane Center really isn't, you know, we see it. But one last stop. Of course, we have X not one last stop. We're gonna go on our models, but you can see this beautiful product. It's Ram. I mean, like Rams. If you go to the web website, they have an awesome enclosed um, floater, which is just magnificent. Look at the detail inside. You can see vortices rotating. But now it's starting to cloud in. Most like it's going to weaken, but still a magnificent major hurricane. You can see the outflow is perfect. You can see that it's just like a buzzsaw. I mean, it looks really good. Um, but this is probably gonna be good, the best going to look on its journey because it's going to be moving to the northwest, going to progressive cooler waters and maybe some dry air probably and yeah, it's going to have some problems. So let's go back to the Atlantic. Now, one of the reasons that um, you know you got to be worrying about this time is it is uh, uh, currently August 31st, and usually when you get towards this time, the tropics are the most active, and you know it's just. Just at the peak of the season, September 10th. Let's go to um, ECNWF. Let's go 24 hours out. You can see here is um, Fred moving off the Cape Verde Islands, but you know it's currently right here. This is a 12 zero, so currently it's right here. So, yeah, so it's moving out, disintegrating. If it comes an open wave, just heads out, and this does not come a problem with anyone. We have this upper level low that'll be steering it away from the U.S. So you guys are we're protected as we go 192 hours. 
we start seeing this up we start seeing a little feature from this upper level low um you see a little piece of it come off the carolina coast and maybe just maybe we might get grace out of this but it could be subtropical it could be something else if we head over to the CMC model, I generally don't look at this model too much, but it, for these reasons I would. And you guys can see that it has a 993 millibar, you know, tropical system, subtropical system probably. And then we had more, and you can see that we just keep get we get another system. We get potentially Grace or some our Henry, and it's sniffing out some, uh, you know, it's sniffing out some activity. So just pay, just pay attention to this. Um, really, you know, if this thing was going to go, it's going to go out to sea, of course, because of the nice troughiness that we're going to have when this happens. Because you can see right here that this trough right here, this trough right here is just going to steer it out to sea. Look at the GFS. It really isn't in agreement with anyone. This just shows a high pressure system over here, and it doesn't show low pressure come off this. It doesn't show anything. Now, Jim, I'm, I'm just looking at each model in detail, see what it says. I can't look at that one. So GMA, I want to see what it says. 192 hours. So you guys can probably guess that most of the model consensus is, you know, here and there and stuff. But um, really, today's video is really more of an overview of what's happening in the world. And you guys can see that it does show the upper level low. Uh, it does show the low pressure system. Um, but it's just, it's, it actually comes from a different source. But we, there's too many disagreements. And likely, if we're kind of grace, it's probably going to come off of here. But, you know, just pay attention to the system. Um, pay attention to the National Hurricane Center for updates. Um, don't pay attention to me. Um, I am weather expert, and I'll talk to you guys in the next update.